Bikepacking Ultralight. This is the third in a short series of videos looking at gear and skills. In this one, well, it's all about campcraft, an old fashioned word, but an essential set of skills. And that includes how to poo in an environmentally responsible way. There are two other videos in this series looking at equipment. The first is about sleeping systems, the second about cooking. And it might make better sense to watch them in that order, although you can probably get away with watching them after this one. I'm making no claims to be an endurance rider or even a bike packer, but I have done a lot of ultralight hiking, so I know a bit about being comfortable in wild places. Liz and I walked from Mexico to Canada on the Wilderness Pacific Crest Trail. It's more than two and a half thousand miles long and we camped almost every night for six months. I've also tested and written about a new generation of ultralight camping kit. If you're looking at my uh, little rucksack and thinking about that, oh, concentrate. <laughs> if you're looking at my little rucksack and thinking, well, that's not very light, that just has my camera kit in. If I was really out bikepacking, I wouldn't have that on my back. Wild camping is defined in Scottish law as lightweight, done in small numbers and only for two or three nights in any one place. Crucially, you should be well away from buildings and roads. There's a link to the full code in the video description and it's worth reading. Here in the hills, access rights apply so I can have my choice. It might be tempting to camp down by the river because, well, it's scenic and it also is handy to refill with water. But the problem is, during the night, the cold air will flow down the glen like, like a river itself. And so down there, it will be much colder than I would be if I'm just a little bit higher. I quite like it near this tree. Now, I wouldn't be under a tree in heavy rain because quite clearly branches come down. You can see them all over. I certainly wouldn't be there. Uh, in, in lightning. Um, however, that wall that's around the tree will offer me a little bit of shelter from, from the northerly wind which expected and the ground's fairly flat. But first, I have to clear it for, of, of all the thorns and little bits of wood that could puncture my sleeping mat. Then I put on extra clothes and change out of anything wet. I'll carry longs, a top, a down vest or jacket and waterproof socks so I can wear wet shoes around camp. This may all look like overkill now, but you can't really re-warm when you're camping. So the best idea is to stay warm and the clothes help you do that. Plus, I'm pretty sure there'll be a lot of ticks around here and not leaving too many bits of skin exposed is a good idea. You can't tell clean water by looking. High up, I might drink it. Down here, best a filter. For this trip, I'm trying a filter bottle. Dirty water in the normal bottle, then use it to refill the filter bottle when it's empty. Unlike some filter bottles, you can squeeze this one to squirt water into a pot to boil. Go slow because it's filtering as it's doing it. My sleeping systems are so lightweight, I carried two. As well as my new untested Alp kit bivy bag, I've brought my much loved tarp tent. Just in case it gets so cold, I have to scuttle in here. Details on both of these are in the first video. My meal is a bought dehydrated one. The reasons for this choice are discussed in the second video, along with the cooking system. Which takes us to the toilet for a number two. I've come well away from any streams or the place where I was camped. Others might want to camp there too. And this is where I'm going to dig a little hole six inches deep. This is my kit, an Alp kit trowel, a dog poo bag, which I'll put the uh, toilet paper in after I've used it, and some, some tissues, which will work as toilet paper. Still not quite six inches, but we'll get there. Hole dug, squat, and take very careful aim. What? Did you actually expect I was going to film myself taking a dump? Replace the grass so anyone treading here won't, well, you know. The only other things are some battery packs to recharge stuff, 
some headphones for entertainment, my first aid kit and toiletries. I'm trying some toothpaste tablets for the first time, but they're not really great. There's something very peaceful about being alone in the hills at night. And of course, I'm not alone. Bats flitted around catching their breakfast. A snipe made its distinctive call. And although I was a little anxious about how cold I would get, I'd chosen my sight well. Lower in the glen, it dropped to freezing. Up by my tree, it was two Celsius. Turns out that was probably the perfect night to sleep out. I don't know what happened to the sub-zero temperatures. There's not a hint of frost on the baby bag. No rain whatsoever. And best of all, of course, no midges. And as you know, it is not always like this in Scotland. It's quite rare. So uh, I stand by what I said about bivy bags compared to tents. If you found this series of videos helpful, it would be fantastic if you would subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Take a look around. You might find some other videos you like. And we'll see you next time.